John Wayne stars in the undefeated following Eyewitness News. TV5 Eyewitness News with Bill J. Cox, Wilma Smith, and the Eyewitness News team. Good evening, everyone. This is the news. A week of terror is over in Zaire, where foreign residents told stories of rape and kangaroo courts that condemned whites to firing squads. French foreign legionnaires parachuted into Kulwezi yesterday with Belgian forces following. At dawn today, the troops fanned out through towns rescuing nearly 3,000 Europeans and routing marauding rebels. The Cuban-trained rebels are now in retreat, but Zaire officials say they took about 60 white hostages with them. Thousands of Europeans who survived are now being airlifted out of that country. Well, Lorraine may be basking in the calm eye of a labor hurricane this weekend. Fully two weeks after it began, firemen have ended their strike against the city. They failed to win any more money from city council, but their work week has been reduced from 52 to 40 hours. The firemen are glad to be back and tell TV5 they're getting friendly welcome waves from local citizens. But non-uniformed city workers have set 12.01 a.m. Monday morning as the deadline for a second Lorraine strike. They, too, are looking for more money, and although negotiations are continuing throughout the weekend, the odds right now are that these workers will be carrying picket signs come Monday morning. Woman? Well, Bill, apparently idealism read head-on into realism in Perry Village, Ohio this weekend. Perry High School students gathered on the main street this afternoon to protest the resignation of English teacher Charles Keis. The trouble started when Mr. Keis, who was threatened with dismissal, resigned. Well, the students tried to help the popular teacher get his job back by obtaining 250 signatures on petitions, which they then presented to the Board of Education. However, the board refused to take any action on the petitions, and about 300 students decided to skip classes Thursday morning. They were promptly suspended. A meeting of students and parents is planned now for 5 p.m. tomorrow at the Perry Town Hall where they hope to find a way to convince the board to reopen the case concerning the resignation of that English teacher. And the Danny Green trial continued today as the jury in that trial of five alleged mafia members accused of killing Cleveland racketeer Green scheduled to begin deliberations tomorrow. Cuyahoga County Common Police Court Judge James Carroll gave the jury its instructions late this afternoon just before they were adjourned to a hotel for the night. Well, how far can a member of the so-called weaker sex go to protect themselves against violent attack? That question is being asked here and around the country as several cases are set for trial involving women who have killed others defending themselves. And the national voice for such women has become Yvonne Wainro, herself awaiting a court decision on her case. She was charged with killing a 62-year-old man who attempted to molest her children. The American Indian woman feels the courts are stacked against women, and the problem goes beyond the United States. It's not only a national concern, it's an international concern now. I've, I've visited Europe, I spoke at the International Tribunal on Crimes Against Women held in Brussels, Belgium, two years ago. The crimes against women are too, there are too many and it has been going on for too long all over the world and it's, it's time for a change. Ms. Wayne Rowe was brought here by the Gold Flower Defense Committee, an organization trying to raise money for the defense of Kathy Thomas, a local woman who also faces murder charges. She goes on trial June 1st. Another look at the effects of desegregation. And a 10-year anniversary for an area festival. Coming up on Eyewitness News.